right, please take notes with me. I know we have a lot of students gone today um, at various field trips, so please take notes for me. Um, everything we work with today will be with right triangles. So please draw yourself a right triangle. Last week we introduced the primary trig function sine, cosine, and tangent. And I shared with you that those primary trig functions are just directions of how to create a ratio using two of the three sides of a triangle. Let's call this, let's call this angle B, A, B, and C accordingly. So when I write down sine, cosine, and tangent, I'm going to use the acronym Oscar had, oh had, Oscar had a heap of apples. And I know there's different acronyms to remember this, but they allow me to know what two sides do I choose when I'm looking at an angle, in this case A or B, it will never be the 90 degree angle, um, for side and which two sides do I use to do the cosine of either angle and which two sides do I use for the tangent. So let's get started. Let's say for instance for this particular problem, I tell you that this is 3 and this is 5. So before I can identify the side, the cosine, and tangent, I need to know all three sides. And with a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem says the A and the B are going to be defined as the two legs. It doesn't matter if 3 is A or if 3 is a B, and likewise if 5 goes for the A or the B. And the C will always be the hypotenuse or the longest side of the triangle. So I'm going to do 3 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared. 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, and so I have 34 equals C squared. Now, algebraically, this says we should have two answers. We should have positive the square root of 34 and negative the square root of 34. But I know that C represents the length, the longest length, of a side of a triangle. And lengths or distances measured can never be negative. Now the next thing is we need to put this into reduced form. So I'm going to start writing down the list of perfect squares. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, and so on. 34 lands right here. So grab your calculator. I've asked you to pick one up. Grab your calculator, please. And we're going to identify where that value lands, and we're going to test all the perfect squares that are less than it. We want to find the largest perfect square that evenly divides into it. <coughs> Here we go. 34 divided by 25. Nope. It's not a nice whole number. Divided by 16. Divided by 9. Divided by 4. And divided by 1 doesn't help us reduce it. So none of the perfect squares allow us to reduce this. So we're going to come up here and write the square root of 34. Now, it doesn't matter whether I use in this particular triangle A or B. Let's do it the sine of angle A. So sine is just a fraction of taking the ratio of the, and the numerator is going to be the opposite side of angle A. So opposite is 5. Hypotenuse, or the longest side, is the square root of 34. This is not wrong. Do me a favor. We actually, I'm going to show you how it's, we're going to get the same answer. Please do 5 divided by the square root of 34. Mathematically, that is not wrong, but it's not in proper form. Why is it not in proper form? Because we don't want to leave any final answer with a radical in the denominator. So how do we remove this? Well, we want to keep the same value. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 34 in this problem. Now I have 5 times the square root of 34, and if you did not know this fact, when you take the square root of a number times the square root of that exact same number, you're left with just the number. So for instance, the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is just 7, or the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. Now I believe that this should be the exact same value as this before I transitioned it into proper form. So let me see. I have 5 square roots of 34. Whoops. 34, I'm going to divide it by 34. We can see that it's the exact same value. You may be saying, but why would I want to change it? Because this had a radical on the bottom. So this is the sine of A. Please circle it. Let's now identify the cosine. Let's identify the cosine of angle A. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so here's angle A. Adjacent side means that it's one of the sides that help create the angle, but it can never be the longest. So these two sides help create it, can't be the longest, which would be 3 over the hypotenuse. 
which is the long side, that would be 34. Mathematically, this is not wrong, but you would not see this as an answer choice. It's not in proper form. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom, in this case, by the square root of 34. The cosine of A is equal to 3 times the square root of 34 over 34. And lastly, off to the side, let's do the cosine of angle, I'm oh, sorry, my fault, the tangent of angle A. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 5, adjacent is 3. 5 over 3. Okay, do me a favor, let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. This is going to be the square root of 5, and this is going to be 8. We're going to call this angle A. So we are going to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of angle A. But before I can do that, I need to figure out the missing side. And so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 8 squared is 64. The square root and the square simplify to 1, and I'm left with 5. 69 equals the square, 69 equals c squared. Bless you. Now, let me write down again, what are the perfect squares? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81. Here is where the square root of 69 lies. So let's see, can I reduce this further? We're going to work our way down. So 64 is the first perfect square that's below 69. We can see it does not work, and I'm just going to keep working all the way down to see do any of these reduce it. Oh, I did. And so far, I've had no luck. No luck. None of them reduce it. So this is the square root of 69. So let's do the sine of A. Remember, I'm going to do this, sine, cosine, and tangent. Oscar had a heap of apples. The sine of this angle is opposite, which is 8, over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 69. Can I have a thumbs up or thumbs down if you're with me in the front and you understand that? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, I'm going to follow these rules. Opposite over hypotenuse for sine. Opposite of this angle is 8. Hypotenuse is 69. Now, in this form, I can't leave it like that. We have a radical on the bottom. So times 69 times 69. So the sine of angle A is 8 times the square root of 69, all divided by 69. Let's do the cosine of angle A. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent to this angle is radical 5 over radical 69. Now this one is a little bit unique. We're going to slow it down. You can have a radical on top, you just can't have it in the denominator. So square root of 69, square root of 69. Now what do we do? How does this work? So we are multiplying. When you have the exact same nth root, they're both a square root, we can take 5 times 69 and we get 345. So on top, I have the square root of 345 all divided by 69. What I still need to see, can I reduce 345 at this level? I can't just leave it like that if it can be reduced. So I'm gonna just going to start with some of the basic perfect squares I know. Like, for instance, if you want to just do it like this, you can. Like, let's just divide this by 15 squared. Let's see if it works. 15 squared, by the way, I know is 225, but maybe you don't know that. So let's see. It does not work. Let's go 345 divided by 14 squared. Well, that doesn't work. Three. Oops, 345 divided by 13 squared. 340, oh, 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 345 divided by 12 squared. That doesn't work. 345, 11 squared. 345, 10 squared. That'd be 100. 345, um, 9 squared, 81. 345 divided by um, 8 squared. That'd be 64. Let me just delete that. Does not work. 345 divided by 8 squared, 7 squared. Doesn't work. Let's go 6 squared. Nope. Let's go 5 squared. Nope. Let's go um, 4 squared. That uh, doesn't look good at all. Let's go 3 squared. And lastly is 2 squared. 
None of them work. I can't reduce it. This is my final answer. Now, the tangent of A for this particular problem would be opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 8. Adjacent is radical 5. Mathematically, it's not wrong. It's not in proper form. So times the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. I get 8 square root of 5 over 5. This is the tangent of A. You can leave a final answer with a radical in simplified form in the numerator, but not in the denominator. I'm missing the side. can't have a length that's negative. Okay, so the square root of 20 is correct. Square root of 20 is correct. Whether you reduce it now or you reduce it later, that's kind of up to you. Oscar had a heap of apples. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. How many of you got to this point, even if you have not reduced it yet? You got to at least this point. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 20 on top and bottom. I have 2 square root of 20 over 20. There's a couple reasons why this cannot be our final answer at this level of your math career. One, let's go back to those perfect squares. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Let's see if we can even reduce 20 because we need to put things in reduced form. Here's where 20 is. I take 20 and divide it by 16 divided by 9, but when you divide it by 4, we get an answer of 5. So I'm going to rewrite this as square root of 4 times the square root of 5 over 20. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Now I see three different terms here, a 4, square root of 5, and a 20. Of those three terms, which two would you consider like terms, the 4 and the 20? You can either reduce them in your head or hit the green key and go directly to the right. And we're going to do 4 over 20, which reduces to 1 fifth. So the sine of A is equal to 1 square root of 5 over 5, or the square root of 5 over 5. This is my final answer in order to get it right with work shown. Okay? Let's go on to the cosine of A. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 4. Adjacent helps create the angle, but it can't be the long side. The cosine of A is adjacent over hypotenuse, and we're going to do it in the same fashion. Times the square root of 20 times the square root of 20, so 4 square root of 20 over 4. I already know that this breaks apart into the square root of 4 and the square root of 5. Oops, what did I meant to do here? I meant to put a 20 here, didn't I? Over 20. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I know this is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. So the cosine of 8 is 8 times the square root of 5 over 20. And now most of you can take 8 over 20 and reduce in your head. If not, you hit the green button and directly next to it, we go 8 over 20. It reduces to 2 over 5. So this is cosine of A is equal to 2 square root of 5 over 5. So I drop this down, and then the 8 over 20 reduces to 2 over 5. Let's do the very last one, is the tangent of A. So tangent of A is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 2, adjacent is 4. So 2 over 4 mathematically is correct. We don't have a radical on the bottom, so I don't have to worry about multiplying times the top and the bottom. It does reduce to 1 half or 0.5.